They're still going to have that Zed ban. They want it, and they do want it. And why wouldn't you want it? I am I am scared of, of Mickey Zed, and I'm not even playing in the game. It is too fine. And also, guys, remember to vote for your super favorite super play this week. Helps out the players. That's right. OGM.Azuba.TV. And there is an Ari ban. I love IM's bans this time. Now that they have an extra ban or two on the blue side, they are going to just use it to decimate and uh, Mickey's viable assassin pool. And if he goes on Cassidy, if he goes on the Varus again, even if he goes on Victor, guess what's going to happen? They're going to camp him, just like well, last game. Well, what do you do? I mean, we could see some, there's some mages that have that kind of backline threat that, um, that could be put out. Like, for example, I mean, Ziggs hasn't been changed. I'm a big Ziggs. I'm a big proponent of Z uh, Ziggs, but um, he hasn't been played. He can do a great amount of damage to the backline, and if that's the kind of the thing that Mickey wants to do, he doesn't have to physically go there to do the damage, too. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good point. Ziggs, the, the falling off of Ziggs has been a bit interesting, especially when wave clear is a pretty big priority in the current meta, and there is going to be an Annie ban. No surprise, you do want to take that out. Alistair and Gragas, I am getting one of them. Yeah. I mean, we'll see if Anarchy kind of, kind of, took a step back and thought about what they, what went wrong at least. And they could, they could feasibly go for the same type of composition that they did in game one, but they would just have to play around the mid lane better. Yeah, I, I agree. And my question here: Do you just not? I think you just don't ban either. Yeah, ban the Sivir. You don't ban Alistair and Gragas. You want to make sure you get one of them. So the Sivir is not going to be able to be used by Anarchy in this game. So, so a lot of that hard engage has fallen by the wayside, and I love it. Just take the Alistair immediately. And if I'm I am as a team, I prioritize the support picks over the jungle picks. And the reason why is that Ignar has a 77% kill contribution. He's number five overall in the league. He is the guy you really want to play around. Him and Frozen are the guys that you can rely on to be contributors to this IM team. So take the Alistair. Give it to Ignar, who's been the one making the plays, and let Tucson pick more reactively. Okay, and Tucson picks Rek'Sai in return into, uh, into the Gragas. Yeah, you have two early game junglers up. Of course, Lyra is very good at that Gragas, and the Azir will be taken oh. once more by Frozen. Blind pick Irelia. Well, they're saying, what else can Expression play? What else can he play? Well, it's a good you know idea. what? I'm pretty sure anybody can play Maokai, so... <laughs> Maybe not Expection, who knows? Well, Ash and Renekton are the hovers right now. Jax? Ignar's just trolling. <laughs> Going back to that classic Irelia Jax matchup, possibly in the top lane. I would say probably not, but you you know what? You never know, Barry. You never know. You just go full season three here, full season two. Those were the days. When Aurelia got nerfed out of every other path. <laughs> the Tristana would be interesting. Yeah, Tristana it provides so much siege and turret pressure, though. I would like to see uh, Lucian from Sonstar again. Just get the bully lane, try and win that out. You still have great siege with the Azir, but you have more early game threat. So, potentially for Rebels Anarchy. That could be a mid lane Aurelia. Potentially. You are actually not lying. That is, I had not considered that possibility. That is the matchup that Faker likes to play Aurelia into, Barry. You are correct, and it is going to be Jax from Expression. Oh, yeah. Now, we have to worry, think about this, Jax. Will it be the teleport smite Jax that Shy decided to play in spring? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't think Probably so. Not. I Probably think not. you have to play Flash with Jax the way he is right now. And there is a hover over the Yasuo. So we have the Yasuo hover. Uh, I, yeah, you're absolutely right. This could definitely be a mid lane Aurelia. If you want a champion that can get into the back lines, maybe Anarchy has figured this out. Maybe they say, we do need Mickey back there causing that disruption on the carries. Aurelia is a great way to do it. And Aurelia, again, that was the matchup Faker played. He right. played Aurelia into Kuro's Azir, and it was, I'm not going to say it was really successful. But the concept was there, and it is mid Aurelia. Yeah. And they have a lot of backline threat now. Rumble, Equalizer, 
landing on that back line. They have isolation from Gragas too for the Aurelia to get into the skirmishes. So Anarchy's comp, I think, is relatively solid. It's also nicely balanced between physical and magic damage. So and they also have Snowflower back on that brush. Yes. Which is a great, great pickup for him. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, when Faker did it, he played well in the team fights, played well in the skirmishes. Obviously, a lot of synergy with that Gragas uh, in the mid game, but he wasn't. He didn't really get much out of the laning phase. He just went even. This is also a very similar composition that SKT ran when they played yep. the mid Aurelia with with the Aurelia with the Corky, the double Trinity Force um, power spike. So if they can sync that up with the Rumble mid game spike too, yeah, right. it's, it's going to be very very strong. Yes, I totally agree with you. And I am. They're pretty item dependent, but there could be some interesting stuff in the top lane. Now they pick the Jax. Jax Rumble, I don't think this is the matchup that they got baited into this by thinking it was Aurelia. Yeah. They definitely got baited into this. Of course, Jax is able to shrug off a lot of Aurelia's damage during trades because he simply goes into Counter-Strike when Aurelia's dealing true damage, and you can't hit him, and then therefore he just stuns you at the end and then then yeah. autos you. So that is... Uh, that is going to be a much different matchup. We haven't seen Jax this season so far. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Well, let's get into the game. Two, IM versus Anarchy. Uh, here we go. I am all stacking up on the top side at the moment, looking to get a bit of a wacky invade down. Are they going to be able to catch anybody? Ixu doesn't know that anyone's there yet, especially creeping in. He's safe. Yeah, they don't. Oh, oh wow. wow. Flash pull that they're going to go straight into a stun while Ixu is dead to rights. Uh, that was a that was a bold shot call there from IM. They yeah. wanted to start using those flashes immediately. Flash for the pulv and the exhaust. Frozen also deciding to use his exhaust. Tucson level W for yes. that extra knockup. Yep, which could be very problematic. It, it depends on what kind of leash he gets. I absolutely agree with you, but you can definitely still. I was actually watching this earlier today in a similar level one situation with a Rek'Sai, and it's not it's not as damaging as you might think. It's okay. definitely not great, but as long as you have an adequate leash, you will be okay. Now, we do have the invade. Look at the ward pattern that I am has placed right here. They're making sure, we've seen this more and more in Korea, they now know with those four wards that there's not going to be any possibility of someone starting on the red side. You also see there's the check onto the Krugs right there. They, ooh, that was actually a bad timing. So what happened was Alistair should have looked a little bit earlier uh, because he actually got seen by the minion wave while he walked past the Krugs. So he wasn't looking at where the minion wave was. He had to go there if he wanted to get the freeze, though. So that bit, bit interesting situation, but this is, uh, this is how you do it these days if you want to uh, get an early steal. It's a, it's a level one boarding formation and strategy that actually just sh first showed up last week. Right. So, very new. This kind of jungle pathing reminds me of the earlier season four, the 4v0 kind of like the push. Because, like, you see both of these, the jungle and the top fall is starting in the bottom side, on the stronger side, rather. And then they just transition that straight into a 4v0 push. Oh! Really, but and there we go, Mickey getting poked out, Expression with the leap in. Lyra's there, Expression close, doesn't get hit by the body slam. She's gonna try and turn oh, no. this one around. Lyra low, there we go. Leap strike, but there's just no stun to follow up. Expression already used it. They got the flash out of Mickey. And you have to wonder, if Lyra had committed to that with, with a own. flash uh, on the body slam, I think Anarchy would have gotten a kill. Yeah, no, definitely. Maybe their nerves have been rattled a bit from <laughs> the last game. You never know with these. I think they definitely could have gotten Expression and taken the red buff away from him because it was given over to him. Uh, so... Bit of a bit of a curious little skirmish right there. No one really wanting to go all in in a situation where I think more all in would have been rewarded. But in the end, the uh, cautiously will cost Mickey his summoner and not very much used on the side of Incredible Miracle. Yeah. And it, it, it's also worth noting that Anarchy has a pretty all in composition. So if they had all in at that point, 
pretty good. Yeah, I think you. I think they will turn that one around quite easily, especially and got way too close to that brush. So we see Snowflower and Lyra trying to hover around the mid lane because they know Mickey's flash is down. So set up a possible counter pick, uh, counter, uh, counter gank. But Snowflower is losing a lot of experience from, uh, from, from, uh, by doing this, though. Yeah, he is not in lane right now. I mean, let's see what Ignar gets. Uh, Snowflower, like you're saying, still only level one. Ignar level two, and now heading into lane as a three-man unit. They don't know where Anarchy is, so they send their jungler and support down with the top laner just to make sure that they're going to be safe from any kind of dive or aggression. And, Anar and Anarchy sees I am move through the bottom side of the jungle with that nicely placed ward at Krugs. Yep. Uh, let's see what they can get here into the bottom side. There is Pings. Onto the blue buff, but they will be disappointed. They're not going to find anything. That side of the jungle's already been cleared out. Lyra is not seen yet. Sonstar all by his lonesome, and this could be a dive. Sonstar going to dash out, and there's the play. TP oh. immediately there, and here comes Expression. Can they finish this off? Snowflower low. Expression just going to hop in, and there's the stun. Ixu on the run with the scrap shield, but there's no follow up. The scuffle still here. Frozen trying to pinch in. And here he comes. There is Expression with the leap strike, but Snowflower actually flashes it. So Expression just lands where the flash started, not where it ended. Frozen gets a nice roam and some more damage off, but that was parried pretty deftly by Incredible Miracle. Problem is, Tucson's the one getting the experience <laughs> from this large creep wave since he TP'd into the top lane. So an advantage for Tucson, but that is some farm that expression really needed. They have right. to punish Ixu now because he can't be allowed to get this wave. There is the flash from Ixu. Ignar wants the headbutt into the wall. Is there enough damage? Exhaust is going to make sure there is. Scrap shield still ticking, but he's going to fall underneath the turret. Ignar with the play, the mini stun into the wall, followed by the pulverized expression. Finally using his flash. Wait a long time. Yeah. Doesn't get the kill, though. That goes over to the cow. He still he still has two assists, which is pretty good if you're uh, if you're a Jax that wants to you know get to that Trinity Force, Blade the Ruin King into like that unkillable god status. So, but meanwhile we have something brewing in the mid lane. Yeah, so Flower with the hook, beautiful hook right to the the Sand Soldier. That's gonna blow the flash, but nothing else. Frozen still holds on to his exhaust. Snowflower, nice prediction. So we have a nice disparity here with the flashes. Like Mickey, <laughs> Mickey's flash will come up, and I expect that, and I'm pretty sure I am will expect that, um, Anarchy will try to make a play right around the mid lane. So I think we're going to see probably a lot more action probably in the next two minutes. Yeah, it really is going to turn into a little bit of a mind game here when it comes to ganking and counter ganking around this mid lane and also the top lane. We're going back to standard lanes right now, which means that we have a flashless Rumble and a flashless Jax, both pretty vulnerable champions yeah. to gank in the top side. So whoever controls the vision around the top side, right now we take a look at the warding, and that's IM. Should have a pretty big advantage. Look at uh, Tucson now just walking back into the enemy top side jungle. This is exactly where he needs to be right now. I mean, you see, well, from judging from the way the top lane is going, you see Rumble up about 15. 14 CS, 13 CS, so he's, he's he's up there. He's getting the advantage, and he's caught. He knows that there's going to be something coming his way soon. Too. Yeah, there there absolutely has to be, but Jax with that low wave clear can just freeze it right next to the turret. Well, he has the ward to defend himself. Rift yeah. Scuttler going to go over. Yeah, and he cleared out the pink ward in the tri brush, so that's one more A little bit of a relief that he has. Tucson went and stole the red from the enemy team since they had the timer on it from the first spawn. Both AD carries at level six as well. Oh, there we go, a little trade, and there's the Lantern. He's gonna pull it back in. Snowflower getting oh. very low. Snowflower, what are you doing, buddy? Staying there way too long. Uh, Sonny gonna try and turn this around. Ignite ticking onto Sonstar. He's gonna try and dodge through some of this. Nice. Ignar, beautiful kill, Sonyun. Going to actually get a double right here. Oh, oh the plays! <laughs> The headbutt flash into the pulverize to lock Song Yun under the tower. Lyra wants to finish it off, but he's going to have to content himself with a pink ward. Great turnaround from Ignar. 
Wow. Snowblower really knowing his limits, too. I mean, he ate an almost full culling. The funny thing is he started that fight at level 3. He's now level 5. He's getting two levels <laughs> from that exchange. But yeah, no, that was a fantastic play from Ignar. Well, two good plays. I was I was very surprised Snowflower was able to get out of that because we look at this, and there's the Phosphorus Bomb down. So they try and go in. Snowflower body blocks about two-thirds of the culling, and he dashes forward. Snowflower, though, baits him in, and Song Yoon starts getting the damage down alongside that Ignite. He's going to fall right there to the play, and Song Yoon at the same time going to... Ooh, beautiful. Great beautiful. Play. Just let max turret range, too. And meanwhile, in the top lane... That is a dead rumble. Poor Yordles. Well. Yeah, well, they are poor because they don't get a chance to farm because they're dead, Barry. <laughs> they're dead. You have the Grandmaster <laughs> at arms against a rumble, against, against a Yordle and a machine. Oh. Oh, and Snowflop looking for the hook. And here comes the teleport. Flashes out. Wow, they're really committing for this, especially wants to go. He slowed up. Not sure about that TP. Ixu going to have a very large TP advantage now. Question is, can Anarchy delay until Ixu's TP is up around this dragon? I am wants to take it. They're going to get the Rumble TP up and operational. Still no equalizer. I think I am going to play more aggressively around that around that dragon. I think they could have taken that dragon. Yeah, they should have just gone for it. But maybe they weren't 100% sure on Ixu's teleport timing, so... Well, but Ixu's teleport is... They are 100% sure on his ultimate timing. Right. And that's really what's going to turn things around. Still only a couple of phages so far on Anarchy, so it's not like they're in a giant power spike yet. And Sonstar has also itemized for the early game. Pickaxe into Brutalizer, so he's in a nice power spike compared to the Corky at the moment. I think they definitely had the position and the timing to get that Dragon. Right, Tusa coming in. Play. Nice. Oh, Snowflower, exhaust, body block, and there we go. Flash on Burrow. Song Yoon going to fall. Double kill. And a double kill for Tucson. And that's surely the dragon going to go over there. One would hope that this is going to be the dragon. It's like Song Yoon just sticking around for a little bit longer to push up the wave at the bottom side. Expression still at top. Remember, the TP's oh, back up. Mickey kind of getting outplayed here by Frozen Exhaust. He can't move. Ignar's coming in. He wants that combo. Expression combo, to combo, combo, combo. There it is. Pulverized. Sand Soldier. And death for Mickey. Well played. So I am just kind of comprehensively outplaying Anarchy on the map right now. We saw that kill from Expression in the top lane. And you know what, Barry? This is sort of what was lacking from Incredible Miracle, was having enough individual playmakers on this roster. But And Tucson also being a little bit uncomfortable with the transition to the jungle. But now that they have such confidence from players like Ignar Frozen and Expression, they're really kind of just laying into Anarchy right here. And this Jax... This Jax is getting scary. Yeah, no. He's going to have his Sheen soon, once he backs, most likely. And then that's going to lead into Triforce. We'll see if he goes into Blade or if he goes straight and tanks that. But I don't think he... He might not need it. He might not need the Blade this game. Yeah, he he may not. I'm curious if he's going to, like you said, go for the Blade or go straight into a Randoins after he's finished. Uh, it's kind of a, a very weird race for Trinity Forces right now because whoever finishes theirs first and can actually force an engagement should have a, a substantial edge. Yeah, but let's not count out Anarchy just yet. They Once they have, like like you said, the Trinity Forces come in, they have this big power spike. If they can win maybe two good team fights, then they're back in control. Yes, that is definitely the case, but they, they're definitely fighting a an uphill battle to do it, considering they're already down 3k gold. Looks like they're going to take a turret, though. Lucian went for, is going to be going for the Ghost Blade. And gets gets some position back underneath. Feels confident that he's not going to get dove anymore, so he does return to pick up a little bit of that CS. Ixu on the top side, though, you can see having to play very far back. He is quite afraid yeah. of what could be happening to him against this Jax as the Jax starts to ramp up. This build interests me, because he got the pickaxe, at least for Lucian, he got the pickaxe, he's going to go into Yomu's Ghost Blade. Is he trying to match the Trinity Force power spike with his own Yomu's Ghost Blade? I don't know, and there we go, Ignar coming in, ult, there's the knockup, followed by another knockup, Tucson and Ignar just CCing Anarchy's dual lane, they find themselves trapped together, another nice engage, Ignar's going to have a CC back up in just a second. Goodbye. 
another kill for this Lucian. Well played, well played. Yeah, a lot of kills going over to Sonstar in this matchup. And I mean, Snowblower and Sungyun just grouping up against the knockup CC. Now the equalizer gonna go down. Expression pops his ultimate. He's going to not, oh, he does get the stun on Delira. Is there enough follow-up? He's dodging. He's just barely out of range of this flame spinner. Frozen coming down. This is not gonna be something that Anarchy's able to follow up on as he leap strikes to his trinket ward over the wall. But well, that's a blue buff gone and is, I mean, is, it, is, it, is it a blue buff gone? I prefer to think of it as a blue buff traded. Very. Right, but you want it on your mid laner, right? So I, I prefer to think that Frozen's going to walk to the enemy blue buff and take it right now. Could he? Oh, yeah. There's, oh, wow. <laughs> They're leashing it for him. <laughs> you had me. You got me. <laughs> wow. Always one eye on the minimap. That's me. Your, your eyes just point in different directions. One on the broadcast feed, one on the no, minimap. No, no. The key is you never actually look at the screen. As an analyst, you just look at the mini map, and then the play-by-play -play caster looks at the main screen, and then you look at the replays. See I, the secrets. <laughs> Today I learned. Well, big wave pushing in to the to Mickey. Picks up some good farm, and Snowball coming for a big play, or not? Walks away. Oh, that was close. <laughs> the mind games. When will he throw the hook? When will he not throw the hook? Well, Mickey's mid Aurelia not going as well as he would have hoped behind this Azir, not in terms of CS, but down with that kill. And the assist. And we see two Sheens on the side of Anarchy. Two Sheens, WTF, Barry. Mm, WTF, two Sheens. That's right. The only the only thing better there <laughs> would be a Charlie Sheen. <laughs> no, 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 no. He just I needs think, some Tiger's think, blood in there. I think everyone disagrees with that statement. I don't know. Charlie Sheen is a it's role model we can all look up to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe then Snowball will land some books. Yeah, maybe he would. If only he worshipped Charlie Sheen. That is also not the way to land hooks, children. <laughs> well, we see a push. And yeah, Vicky responding right now to Sin. Gets the best of him though, and there is Sonstar. He's going to fall, but that's a kill. There is expression with the teleport frag coming out of thin air to just jump on Mickey's head. His 360 no scope. Right <laughs> yes, there. it was his 360 no scope. All right, and, well, um, I don't know there's about no, this. There's no equalizer, so I'm not exactly sure that is necessary. He's going to just get bounced back right away. Ignar still has the unbreakable will. Pops that, and. Everyone trying to collapse. Pros is just going to take the mid lane turret in response. Sacrifice the Ignar for the mid lane turret. I would take that. Definitely any day. worth it. Ignar still just going to drag out, out as long as it can, buy his team Ooh. some time. Nice uh. dodge from Tucson after the lantern brings well. Song Yoon in. But they trade a turret for that. Now, can they get top here? It's going to be the question. With of course, with Mickey back up, looks like they may be able to trade. Well, with this many recalls. I mean, I think they're going to take the top lane turret. The mid lane, well, they have the training force. Mickey does have the training force. We're in that power spike that Anarchy wanted to be in. Yes, but they entered this power spike at a 6K gold deficit, which yeah. basically is going to nullify it, unfortunately. And it's also, we have to consider, Expression is also a player with the Trinity Force right now. And the Trinity Force on Corky, I mean, Sonstar has Infinity Edge. So he didn't go straight for the Ghost Blade. He decided just to stack the gold on the Avarice Blade and get the Infinity Edge as fast as possible. Now, when we talk about no Sword Shoes, Corky with Trinity Force versus nearly Ghost Blade, Infinity Edge, Lucian, I'm going to take the Lucian here. And so this is this is a bit of a timing window missed yeah. from Anarchy, especially now that there are two Dragons down. They're going to try and fight. Oh. Frozen goes in. Awkward Emperor's Divide. Equalizer follows up. For Anarchy Tucson, way too deep, Jax. but there's Jax. How much can he do? Lots of bursts onto Ixu. He can't get into the back line. Sonstar too low to follow this up. Sangyun looking for rockets. Snowflower there, he's gonna flash Ooh. pull. Sangyun gets pushed forward. No finisher yet. Mickey falls to expression. And now Ignar just having a huge game. Flash, Counter-Strike, stun, another one. dead. Expression wants another one. Valk is up. And there's the Lantern, so no more kills for this Jax. But he does enough. Ignar has just been a monster this yeah, game. Yeah, he's playing so well for 
I mean, he played well in set one too, as well. Like, just the roaming plays, the roaming plays, his mechanical plays. This is such a solid pickup for IM, and and has been for the whole season. Yeah, and remember, Ignar is a rookie. And let's see here. Obviously, Snowflower going to take a little bit of damage with that calling. Good equalizer this time to try and turn it around. They grab two, sit, collapse on him immediately. Expression tries to get in, but he doesn't actually get much done at the start of this fight. Some damage down, but Song Yun still here at full HP. Now they're on the run, they're on the retreat, and IM knows that Snowflower's going to catch Ooh. up, so they just turn around. Song Yun gets way too far forward. Mickey tries to follow up, but Sonstar is there with that Infinity Edge doing a bunch of damage to this very squishy Aurelia. Remember, all she had was a Trinity Force. Yeah. Well, now she has a Glacial Shroud, but it might be too late. And Azir just does so much magic damage at this point, too. Morello Namakon is going in for the Luden's Echo right now. Could be Zonius. Zonius, maybe. Yeah, it could be Zonius. Yeah. In fact, eh, I actually don't know what that's going to be. I think the Zonius is a safer pick here, for sure. Especially against the Aurelia, who's going to be trying to dive that back line. And if he wants to go in... Uh, against the melee force of Rumble and Aurelia. I think probably the the, the Zonius is a better choice here. Okay. And Sonstar with his finished Yomu's Ghost Blade. Oh boy. He's, He's got the, the very painful cullings now. Oh man. Instead of just individual bullets, it's just a steady stream <laughs> of just lasers. Okay, well, Ixu going to catch this wave. It looks like they're not going to put too much pressure on the top side right now. Meanwhile, Expression catches the bottom wave. They want to see how far Ixu's going to push this out so they can just kill him. He doesn't have his Zonius yet, so he can't go into stasis. Okay, goodbye, Ixu. That's it. Oh. I don't know if I would have even dropped Equalizer there, actually, because his death timer is only at about 30 seconds, and he has TP up, so maybe he could TP Home Guard Equalizer somewhere else on the map. I think the reasoning was that he slows him down, gets enough damage done, because Anarchy were trying to collapse. So maybe at least get something down so that the rest of his team can clean up. That's the only reasoning I could feasibly see, but expression is going to be a split pushing god. <laughs> Well, it's that, it's that time in the game, isn't it? Yeah. Health Crystal next. Then, so we'll see, probably going to be a Giant's Belt, mm -hmm. and then whether it's going to be something like War Mogs, uh, considering the mixed damage of Anarchy or a Randuin's Omen. We shall wait and see. No, I'm surprised there hasn't been a Baron play yet yeah. from LZIM. I mean, yes. It's only been a minute and a half since Baron spawned, but they also are 8,000 gold in the lead and can really bait it very nicely. Well, this is what differentiates teams like, you know, Long Zoo Iron versus like SK Telecom, because SK Telecom would know right now that they have that 8,000 gold lead and go for the Baron because they know the other the opposing team can't do anything about it. So Long Zoo Iron, much crisper shot calling today. Maybe still some more things oh. that they could, you know catch up to in terms of SK Telecom. Maybe. Yes, yeah, that's that's definitely true. And sure, Anarchy isn't the strongest opponent in this league, but at least IM is putting up a more dominant showing than we've seen from them in the past when they have looked very sloppy. I mean, this is the long zoo IM we wanted to see when they came out of the qualifiers of the promotion yeah. tournament. They look so dominant there, and then they yes. just flopped. Yeah, they. I'm not sure what exactly happened in those those promotions because uh, they turned it around and that big upswing that we saw in their talent with all these new additions to their roster really wasn't panning out for them. Mm -hmm. so a little bit of a scuffle for Baron control in the river. I mean, the longer long as I can just drag this out, I mean, expression just kind of keep shoving into that turret. Yeah, and five death rumble versus... <laughs> And what I will say for Ixu is at least he's not behind in levels. That is probably yeah. one of the biggest saving graces right here. Because if Expression had a two-level advantage on him, Ixu would just instantly die. Yeah. He would be dove under turret. There would be nothing he could really do. That's still not enough items to be dealing with those jacks here. Just the Seeker's Arm Guard and a Haunting Guys. Yeah, this is... He's, he's been playing very defensively, just getting traded on, recalling, coming back into lane with home guards. He can get there before the next wave hits, thanks to the home guards and the fact that he only has to walk to the tier two. But uh, it is uh, an inevitably losing battle, and it will be Health Crystal into Cutlass Berry. He's going for the blade. Let's do it. <laughs> Split push for days. Split push for days, indeed. So. 
I am uh, playing a, a very patient game while this dragon spawns. They've been very good about controlling the dragon in both of the games so far. They're looking for number three here at a very short 23 minutes into this game. And they're going to take it right now. Anarchy is in no position to contest this one. No, they're not, even though they do have wave pressure. Mickey Ooh. trying to split push, but... Oh, uh, wow, TP actually, especially has to use his ultimate right away, gets the stun onto Mickey, has Ignar's a ward to there. hop to, Ignar's here. I think they should just do this, Frozen's on his way. What? They, they could go for this. Well, the Snowflower coming in from the side. They're so far ahead, but Ignar just going to take one for the team at the moment. Frozen not wanting to actually engage right there. Expression going to hop out. Ignite is ticking, and there Ooh. you go. Explosive cask champagne party for his death. And that will be two kills, actually. Uh, Frozen was looking to cut that one off. Sonstar was in the bottom lane, but I think if you aggressively trade right there, uh, you can actually come out on top just due to IM's massive gold edge. I wonder what there were worried about maybe just like the cooldowns were down so they decided not to fight well i think they were just worried that there could be five people collapsing but frozen had the inside track on that so they right. actually could have started off that fight as a 3v2 in favor of im i feel a little bit a little bit hesitant you gotta you gotta be aggressive with this lead otherwise if anarchy can make plays like that and play around the fact that you're not going to meet them head on when they take risks like tp'ing into that situation yeah then that's how you get gold back if you're Anarchy. So I think you're absolutely right Anarchy, to take a risk right there if you're Anarchy. And they pull it off. Nicely done. Well, we have the Frozen Heart on Aurelia, which is a big buy against Azir as well. And against Jax. Yeah. Huge buy against Jax. Yeah, like you said, Jax is here. It really does shut down so many facets of IM's composition. Lucian. Yeah, it's very efficient. One of the most efficient items you could buy. Right. I mean, even Rek'Sai gets in a lot of auto attacks with his Q and the passive on uh, on her ultimate as well. So we'll see. I mean, if I think if Anarchy decides to force the issue in the mid lane right now, they could probably take this turret. I don't know how the fight would go. TP is down for uh, Anarchy, so yeah, I don't I don't know if I would risk that. They have to deal with expression with the TP edge, and I am responding appropriately. They know that Mickey's fainting to that side. They don't have any wards in the jungle right now. Expression has a warding totem that he could be using. It has charges in it. Put it in the tri brush, Expression. <laughs> Do it. He's, got, he's, he's part of the Marin school of top laning. You know, you have these charges of your warding totem, but you never use it. I don't know why you would be warding right now if you are, if you are Expression, but chooses not to. They also choose not to even look for a pink ward in that brush. <laughs> <laughs> the pink ward that could. Wow, that is that is not good vision control from Incredible Miracle. Yeah. They looked a lot tighter on that front in the first game. At least they still have some deep wards in on the top side of the map. I mean, you see teams get ahead. They get hockey. They get overconfident. Then they get turned on. They get, you get turned back on. So you never know. You got to keep playing tight. But you see, oh, is he gonna find the pink ward now? Nope, no, no. whoa, <laughs> just walks past it. Puts his own ward down on the other side of the brush. At least he did that. Yes, at least he did that. Well, gonna take the entire jungle right now, just trying to keep Anarchy down in whatever way they can. Maybe they just wanna fa focus on the split push and the dragon control and think they can take the game that way. I know why he didn't ward earlier. He was waiting for the recharge on the on the ward, so he had two stacks. He's keeping one in reserve uh, yeah. so he can jump. Yeah, possibly. I think that's what it is. It is cleared out, however. And that's going to be the end of... Oh! Uh-oh. Oh. Blind split pushing. Oh, uh, the ward. Up. Well, he doesn't have a ward now to jump to, so will this be the end of him? He's going to get into another 1v2 against Ixu and Mickey. Ixu oh, getting... Done. So much damage, though. There's the Zonius. He oh. just picked it up. The bait is enough. However, two people on the bottom side. No TP, and that means a very easy Baron attempt. And no steal possible. Ignar keeping Lyra out of the pit. So they trade a kill onto Jax for a Baron. Not worth. Snowflower had a little bit of a Lee Syndrome moment there. He got the death sentence, and he's like, I'm going in for the big play <laughs> steal. So... Well, what are you going to do at that point? You've yeah. committed so much 
to killing that Jax, and you don't have anything at all in terms of global pressure without that teleport. Well, what do you do? What do you do for Anarchy right now, Monte Cristo? I think you lose 2-0 to Incredible Miracle. I think though that's your option. That's your option? I think you have a quirky and an Aurelia in the mid lane, and you missed your power spike. You fell behind in early skirmishes, and now this Lucian, this Azir, and this Jax are only going to get scarier as this game goes on. And you already don't have the tools. Ixu has to be lanterned out. Oh, just barely. Wow, Ignar flashed for that, too. He used Righteous Glory, his combo, and Flash to try and prevent that Lantern from being taken. He really wants the MVP. <laughs> He's making, trying to make all the big plays, just throwing the Hail Marys left and right. Yeah, seriously. Well, slowly just going to push in, as long as who I am. Nothing much more that Anarchy can do. Well, stopping, stopping this, Jax. At the very least, the one positive to this, Barry, is that Jax actually doesn't have Baron Buff. That is absolutely huge <laughs> That's true. in this split push situation, that he can't put as much pressure on by himself as the rest of his team. Well, we got Mickey pulling his best expression impression right now. The old expression impression? Yeah. But as long as I'm just going to take the bottom turret. Yeah, I mean, Mickey just trying to split force, trying to get whatever damage he can done, but it's, it may not be enough. I am actually backing off at the moment. Now the dragon is live. They want number four, decide that they have control over those waves. Expression is getting rep. This is not a good use of Expression's time right now. Yeah, but that fourth dragon will help with Long I'm split pushing immensely. Yes, yes it will. Okay, here oh. we go. Engage from Frozen, Snowblar flashes the ult. Frozen still on the backside. Mickey right in the mix, but that equalizer not doing much work. Lyra manages alive. to take out Frozen. Mickey still alive, but Sonstar on the cleanup right now. Especially still 100% HP. He's going to get some stuns down right in the middle of the enemy team. Sung is going to have to flash out. Now Mickey starting to turn it around because we do see the Lucian still on the ledge. Mickey will go down after the double kill. No more damage really for Anarchy. Their carries are down or injured Sonstar trying to get some more work done play right now Tucson just too tanky oh, okay Sonstar still moving forward he wants the dashes gets one there's the Arden Blaze looking for another one Prey Seeker gonna hit Snowflower he's ticking up in terms of health with that health potion oh, oh. the triple get with the culling get called <laughs> get called indeed that'll be a dragon for okay. LCIM. Sonstar was up on that ledge for a really long time during that fight there without actually auto attacking. He was really afraid of Mickey jumping back into him. And once Mickey went down is when he started to come back. And he needed to know where Sonstar was as well because he didn't want to eat a rocket to his face too. So I think he, was, he played cautiously. Yes. Maybe a little overly so, but still, he gets the call. He does get the call. He also gets the 11,000 gold lead. Five turrets to two. The the one the one thing left for Anarchy is at least their base has not been cracked by Incredible Miracle, but this Jax is so scary right now. Blade completed, he's gonna just go on to Mickey. And there's the TP again from Rumble. They wanna turn it around. Tucson is there to help this time, but okay, goodbye. Goodbye, Expression. Wow. <laughs> Good luck on your well. own. <laughs> Uh, the rest of the team was coming from Anarchy, though, and yeah. no one else was set up from IM to actually respond, so probably the, the proper decision just to let him die. You'd think Expression would learn by now, but I guess not. Lyra. Anarchy looking for that damage. Lyra just too squishy. Sonstar very damaging as he takes Snowflower down to half HP with about half a calling. Okay, crits and Frozen coming over the wall mean that Sunflower gets to spend some time with Nice black and white screen. <laughs> and now they're pushing up the mid lane. They want to take down this inhibitor turret. They have the strength to do so, certainly. Mickey oh. has a huge wave in the bottom. Oh, uh, he's being calling. Well, Mickey's split pushing is really not actually helping them very much this yeah. game. Could he take on this Jax 1v1, to be honest? I level 16 to level 15? He could. 
he's getting close to the blade. It's it's definitely a tough call. Yeah. If if Jax gets, see the problem is that it, if Jax gets an armor item, Aurelia, because she only has that single damage type, really has issues. The empowered strikes from Jax, he at least has a lot of mixed damage. Right. So it is harder for Aurelia to itemize. Has to get some MR. It has the Merc Treads, but may just not be enough. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was uh, the blade buffs, which actually ah. do help Jax quite a bit, right? That's because true. they increase the range on the blade active again, mm -hmm. which was originally nerfed to keep champions like Jax from split pushing and just hitting 80 carries with it, because it got buffed to 550, so it's a lot easier to get in range of an 80 carry and use it to lock them down and kill them than it used to be. Right. And I think the Pashno said that it was in response to the, recent, the Blade nerfs that had come out a while ago as well, so. Right, when Blade was originally released, it, it had the same range for both melee and range champions, then it was reduced for the, the melee champions. Anarchy doing their best Samsung Galaxy impression for spring. Oh! Ooh, not, nah, they don't want it. Well, there's nobody left. Snowflower's just there alone. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Snowflower, you poor bastard. Left high and dry. His soul leaves the mortal <laughs> coil. <laughs> By your team. He's like, I got the hook, guys. Everybody's like, lol, no one's here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we're in base. Where are you, buddy? Mickey decides to go ham on Ignar, but not enough. The unbreakable will, enough to shrug it away. Just the flesh wound. <laughs> Poor Snowflower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, here's the turret that Expression's already nearly killed. And Expression walks in and out, accidentally aggroing it. Ooh. Oh, flash pull dodge there by Lyra, but that's going to give him a little more time alone with this Baron. Ignar still it. needs to make sure that no one's going to come into the pit. Nobody will. And they don't even try. Expression actually gets the Baron buff this time. So this should be Dang. the push that IM needs. No, they want five dragons. Oh, Look at them. They do. You're absolutely right. They do, <laughs> they do want five dragons. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, yeah, we're going to use most of our Baron buff just to. Or oh, just a five man push? Get this fifth dragon. Lyra's there. He wants to get onto the carries. He gets found out by a ward over the wall. Oh, well, here comes a siege. The calling does a lot of damage. Yep, but there's the turret going down. And that means an easy inhibitor. Ooh, now they get a hook onto Expression. That is nice. Expression has to use his Counter Strike early. Uh, Frozen gets poked a little bit here, but it just isn't enough. Lyra on the flank. Mickey there. Also, Lyra. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage from Sonstar and from Frozen, but he gets over the wall, gets Lantern to safety. Yeah. Well, slow and methodical from long as I am. They want to go for the top one. They want three inhibs. They want five dragons. They want Baron buff. They want everything. <laughs> they, want, they want to recall for items right now. Just uh, take it all out, Barry. Greedy, greedy I am. No, no, Barry. It's not greedy. It is beautifully methodical. <laughs> I definitely want to win. Incredible miracle. This, is not, this isn't greed. No, no incredible miracles See, needed greed, here. Greed implies that they, they really just, they, they're overextending in some way. They're, they're so desperate for it. There's a negative connotation. Uh -huh. This is just safe League of Legends. I don't know. They seem pretty desperate for this fifth dragon. <laughs> I, I think they This is safe. Made... Why not take the fifth dragon? Okay, fair enough. Take the guaranteed victory. Even well, take the red buff. Take the scuttle crab so you have the speed shrine. Just dot your I's and cross your T's. To be fair, actually, against KT, did they have five dragons when they made that three three in have down push? No, yeah. KT was the one who had all the dragons. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right, oh. here we go. Tucson wants to fight. Ixu finds himself alone and crowd controlled and dead without using Zonia's. Mickey, Mickey finds his way into Sonstar. He's going to get stunned eventually, but Sonstar having a really hard time. Has to flash over the wall. That'll be enough. Tucson, whoa! Oh. Sonstar just dashing back and forth over the wall. Sonstar with the That boots. was really good to dodge all of the threat coming in from Mickey and then from Lyra. Song Yoon gets expression, and Jax is going to win his first game of the season here in Champion Summer. I am with a very convincing 2-0 over Anarchy. What a way to make a return debut.
Signature champion, 2-0 <laughs> victory. Right there, split push your way to victory as well. Even in the matchup, he didn't expect. He thought it was gonna be Aurelia yeah. Jax, I promise you. Didn't see that Aurelia coming in to the mid lane, and that is a nice game, and especially a solid performance from Ignar. Whew. Great, great play, and Ignar, he's having a great rookie season. It was supposed to be his rookie season last time with Winterfox and NA. Didn't manage to 